All right, here we go with game two of the series. We've got JDG with the early lead. As expected, this is the best team in the world. Uh, they are the favorites at all times. We have spoken about what could happen right now. So it's worth talking about the format. You go 2-0, you're immediately into promo series. Two of these teams that are in their promotion series today, they are going to qualify and then they have to sit and wait. They have to wait for several days while the rest of the bracket shakes out. Yes, the rest can be good. It can be good for your psyche too. Like, hey, we're feeling good. But other teams could battle for as many as 11 games, right? So let's say, for example, that JDG loses this game and then beats LNG. LNG now has five games. Now they have to go into another promo series. That's at least seven games. What if they lose that one in eight? We're talking about at least 10, maybe 11 series or 11 games played to get into the uh, elimination bracket. Yeah, you probably don't want to deal with those up and ups and downs and the emotional roller coaster, but the fact that you get through that can steal your resolve and make you that much stronger going into the elimination. So it will be super interesting to see whether or not that ends up playing out. Uh, all the teams that have to play in that 2-2 series will have already played a series and another one, so they will have had several games uh, to play, minimum of seven, as many as 11 games to get to where they're going. Now, going into this game, we've got LNG opting to get Renekton into Cassante. Uh, it's going to dominate this lane levels two through five. Uh, mo what we've seen many times is Cassante just getting kills at level seven. Zika opting to play super, super aggressively. I actually really like this. This is how I want the lane to be played. As Renekton, you actually play up, play, play for your Fury, Q1 to get uh, Wave Prio to help to go for the push. And then you'll have Q2 available with Fury. If you play super aggressively, you have to be willing to take 60% of your health to go through. And then you can start dominating the lane. So absolutely love this from Zika. A lot of people have played a little bit too afraid, giving Cassante a little bit too much room. He's lost enough of his early strength where you can actually do this on Renekton and several other laners where you can play for this. He's just not as dominant. And now you see this window where you're really strong. Uh, actually dislike that Q from Zika, giving up some of that tempo, opting to try to keep trying to push this in when in reality, you really want to keep this lane and then stack this fourth wave in for the push. Tarzan timing it with an invade. This is very nicely done. This is exactly when Renekton lanes are strongest. So Jarvan is going for this invade. I absolutely love this. Good way to answer a five camp start as well. We saw this, uh, what the answer was last time to make sure that to make sure that enemy team didn't have a chance at taking your respawn raptors we actually saw this happen and then we've also seen full side blue into take my immediate buff into krugs we've also even seen this where you have raptors blue gromp then reverse clear and then go so there's a lot of different adaptations love to see this level of precision from these from these junglers now this is the part of the lane that is unplayable for Cassante. Right, you've given you've given up the lead. It's level three, four. You've used all your mana to try to get the best lane state possible. But the fact that Tarzan was in position to make sure that they had a really good invade, sent Kanavi to packing and back to the east side of the map means that Zika gets exactly the lane state that he wants. He's going to enjoy a half level lead, which means he'll be first to five and first to six. He might look for those invades uh, or for those all ins in those positions. Now, very interesting from Hong and Gala here. Uh, going for an aggressive trade, I think what they're trying to do is just take away some amount of resources before they go for a recall, and that looks like it's exactly it. Something that you can do on Rakan Zaya that's completely busted that we don't see enough of. One of them, specifically Zaya, push the wave and then go and just start channeling your recall. Then Rakan can go take a trade go all in, in fact, spend everything, right? W, auto attack, Q, and then dash back to the Zaya in time to get the empowered recall. Uh, that is one of the most busted things that you can do in the game, probably the single best thing that those two do together. Of course, the other thing that we can have is the all in threat with Zaya using her W and giving Rakan access to the same effect. Here we go, 369 actually fighting this back. This this has to be a spot where Zika wants to try to get back. Uh, he'd prefer to go and get his spikes if he were gonna go for the all-in. The fact that he stayed here 
Yes, it means that he's going to get a better back off. We're talking about 4,500 gold, so we're going to see like Iron Spike Whip plus Boots here. Uh, but it means that you lost your window to all in at level 6. The fact that he will have those items should mean that he's invincible to the 369 all in, but we'll see how that plays out. Again, I actually love this. Zika coming back in saying, all right, you want to try to freeze? That's great. I'm going to use all of my resources to take the maximum from you. Even feeling strong into the maw of this damage, knowing that Maokai can never threaten you on this gank. All he can do is feed you extra kills using the ultimate to the maximum effect. Absolutely love this from Zika. All of these resources, you can consider this to be permanent damage that you will be able to use to your advantage. Now, I don't particularly like the dive here. Yes, you do potentially have an advantage, but we're talking about Cassante. All right, Cassante and Maokai, both of whom can mitigate so much damage. I think LNG wisens up and steps back. We'll see if Renekton decides to be super confident. After all, this was just a ruby crystal and a refillable. Love seeing Zika take this to the maximum, spending as much time as possible in this advantageous position. And when he's ready, he'll go and get this recall. We're starting to think... We're starting to look at Iron Spike Whip plus Boots plus Kindle Gem here. We'll see if he goes for a Demolish. No, it's not Demolish that he's got. Oh, interesting. So he opted for a second wind, probably in Rev um, Unflinching, most likely for this game with the Rel Maokai Cassante. Um, interesting. Love to see Renekton playing for this, getting as much power right now. That forces Cassante into another recall, which means uh, Renekton's able to push this wave in. He'll be able to get all that gold into, into his inventory with a wave that's pushing out with an item lead, with everything. It forces 369 into a Bramble Vest start. Uh, this is something that you're trying to avoid. Sometimes you can use it and just play it for the Renekton matchup. It's also particularly good when you have these two comp combining. Uh, but we'll see if Jarvan's able to shred through that resist with the Q and then auto proc for himself. Meanwhile, Phage and Iron Spike Whip. I actually don't like Phage right here. I would have preferred to see Boots. Boots can let you do more on the map while letting, letting, letting you play aggressively. You're going to get so much value out of plated steel caps this game, right? Now, we will... I am curious to see what is Kaisa going to do. I don't think that you can afford to go the Lethality build because you've already got Jace going Lethality and then you've got Cassante. If you're doing that, you've got a zero damage composition and LNG will just walk all over you. So it's probably going to have to be a Noon Quiver, meaning that they can maybe get Ruler stuck here on a bad back, trying to force this item, trying to force this and Boots potentially. See what they end up going. Very late tier from Jace as well means that we're not going to see a pre-20 minute mana immune stack. The Amir mana will not come online probably until 21, if not 22 minutes into the game. Zika not giving the option for the all out. We see people get hit by that Q3 and immediately have it turn into all out. And Cassante goes for the winning trades in those positions, even when they're at an item discrepancy, but just not looking to do it against this much Now, how much can Renekton get for themselves in this situation? Silas has somehow also out CS'd. Uh, this is Jarvan Diff for sure. The fact that that early invade, remember how we saw that happen? It meant that Maokai has been playing on the back foot the whole game. Uh, it means that Jarvan's been able to walk around the entire jungle. Maokai has not been able to defend his laners. It means that all of the laners are getting a CS gap against them, even though Jace should be stuck stomping on Silas. There's no ultimate, nothing to steal. You should be ranged. You should be crushing this matchup. Uh, if I'm JDG and your jungler gets into a gap like that, the best thing you can do is just play aggressively everywhere at the same time and tear the jungler to be everywhere, all places at once. Uh, they can't do it, but instead they opt to play passively everywhere. Playing into the L's means that... Uh, this is just going to be a snowball diff. And um, Jace, Kaisa don't do well when they're not playing from ahead. We do end up seeing... Oh, actually, is this going to be Storm Razor? Might be a Storm Razor here. I hope it's not Static Shiv. Static Shiv is just too weak now. Now that it has, what is it, down to 10%, maybe 20%. 20%. I think it's all the way down to 10 
of an AP ratio means it basically doesn't have any damage attached to that AP. Oh, this is demolished from Zika. Okay, it must just, just have been on cooldown before. Now we get the full value of the proxy. Renekton's going to start snowballing this matchup. He knows that Maokai, not only is he not a threat, but they've been setting up for Dragon for themselves. Last known information, they have that sap sapling here, so can expect Maokai to be bot side and is looking to just play ahead of these waves, force Cassante into the difficult situations uh, where he has to either give chip damage to the turret or give good tempo to Renekton. Now, Renekton actually opting to back and not take this wave for himself. Kind of interesting. Is the 11 wave, which is not going to be a cannon. The cannon waves are on 4, 530, well, 234, 537, 830, 10, 1130, 13, 1430. And then starting after 15 minutes, every two waves is a cannon. And then starting after 25 minutes, every wave has a cannon. Uh, some people are unsure why it is that junglers get outscaled by their laners, even though jungle is so OP. That's why. It's because starting at 15 minutes, you start getting an extra cannon uh, every from every three waves. That's an extra 100 golden experience every three waves. And then starting at 25 minutes, you got even more. So the waves literally just start becoming worth more than the camps as you progress. Gore Drinker finished versus a completed Thornmail. This is a rarity. Now, interesting enough, this Thornmail is actually going to carry a lot of value because it's actually good against all of these champions, right? Even the Silas. So that is a, a nice adaptation here from 369. I like that he actually finished this, not just sitting. Most times you end up sitting on Bramble Vest, but in this game, Thornmail is actually going to carry a lot of value. And in this game particular, in this matchup, it means that he's going to start just trading. You know, he's down 24 CS. But that's basically going to be the extent of it. He's he's not going to miss anymore. Even if Renekton goes and jumps ahead of the wave, uh, that's going to be it. The big tax is going to happen if Renekton's able to take the Krug's camp as well. Now, huge advantage here for LNG. I want JDG to give up these dragons. You have no business staying here. Oh, we do see all the all out. All right, Zika just not taking aggro though means he doesn't take any extra damage. Means that he'll just walk away from this. Might even go in and clear out division. I don't think he knows about these control wards yet. And he does opt to not go for the Krugs, which is kind of surprising. Normally you'd expect, after that all out, just walk out ahead and go here. So he probably lost track of where Malachi was. If they had knowledge of the setup for Dragon and they knew that Malachi was definitely on this side of the map throwing those saplings, then it could have been a good spot for Renekton to say, okay, you're all out, down, let me go clear this wave, go take Krugs, take an advantage, and even just roam over for this wave. I think that's what he's going to do now. Uh, JDG has to give this up. Now things are a little bit different because now G you have a moment where Maokai and Jace could come over. I don't like what Maokai is doing at all here. Looks like he's coming back to maybe look at contesting this, and it's just a very, very weak play. I'd like to see you come over and try to bail out Cassante. Uh, on one of those proxy plays. Uh, bringing over Jace, Rel, and Maokai, right? Rel could have come straight out of base. You could have held him here long enough. You're not looking for necessarily an all-in, but you're looking to try to harass him and keep him in this vicinity post-proxy and see whether or not you can get enough damage and bring the team over uh, to pick that up. It looks like there's no shutdown available, which is kind of odd. He's absolutely massive in this situation. So... Anyways, the play, the play is gone. It looks like they've moved Silas over saying, I don't want to deal with that thorn mail. Beautiful upfront damage here by Silas. Again, like we said, punishing the thorn mail purchase. Look at all that damage, beautifully done. It is first strike Silas. So you see five points here in the queue. Uh, if it's melee versus melee, for example, when you go Akali versus Silas, you often see Conqueror and W Max. But in this game, you're going to see Q. That's how you battle against the ranged champions. LNG has, has control of the whole map right now. They can do whatever they want. They find Renekton into Jace, bad situation for Jace. They have Silas into Cassante, bad situation for Cassante. You even, you even have the interaction where you can get the all out as Silas, putting yourself at low health to give yourself the empowered W right off the bat. Uh, could be an interesting thing, plus you get the extra benefits of the better cooldowns in that mode. And the no mana costs, right? So could could potentially see some interactions 
whether or not they go for it. I don't think you can correct me if I'm wrong. Fifteen twenty in the timestamps if you if you know the answer to this. But uh, Silas picking up, do they actually grab the spells of Cassante? I don't think they do, right? It would be kind of cool, though, if you just had the all out and then you just became Cassante, right? You just get access to all of their different spells. I don't think so, though, because all out, like all of his spells have line text and then in the all out version. So I think while you're all out, the spell itself changes. I don't think that that's how it works, but uh, we'll keep an eye out for it. We'll make sure to see it if we can confirm it. If Silas even goes for that. Now, JDG opting to try to fight for Harold here. They see Silas in the bot lane. They're, they might opt to give this because Silas is definitely getting this, but this is going to be favored. Yeah, they go in, Silas pushes the wave all the way in. They're going to take this fight. This is going to be JDG favored. If LNG goes, sorry, this is going to be LNG favored. If JDG tries to commit for this, they are going to get wiped. They end up spending Maokai's life to get the 300 gold from the Herald. Uh, not worth obviously giving up more than that on the assisted kill plus the fact that you are off the map now for 20 seconds means that your team cannot contest anything silas goes up and picks up the waves up in top renekton will go bot jace can't answer anything here in fact even played passively wondering if renekton were in any kind of bush okay Renekton realizing that there could be a another champion nearby or or in fact might have even seen Rel there on the control ward as they're passing by. So realizing can't take that fight, does stall long enough and goes on to missing with Jarvan 4 as support. So beautifully done by Zika. Zika's been playing super, super well this game. Love how he handled level one, love how he handled level eleven. He's been doing everything well. Now, one of the things that Cassante has an issue with, when you do go for this build, anytime that you don't rush the completed Iceborne Gauntlet or a Bami Cinder, you do end up losing a lot of your wave clear potential. Usually when you go with this Thorn Mail, you want to follow it up with Bami Cinder for a couple reasons, all right? It makes sure that you're gonna have AOE damage for your clear. It also makes sure that with one uh, pattern of your Q rotation, you'll be able to clear the whole wave, which is not something that's possible right now. Right now, he's banking on three Sheen procs. It's not going to be enough from the AoE damage to be able to get all of that down. Let's take out the, take a look at this fight. The fact that Kanavi even got this, you know what? That props to missing. Props to missing. You know, the guys are saying, "Hey, I need help for dealing this damage." She throws her Q into into the Rift Herald, and that damage has two hundred sixty percent extra damage to monsters. Uh, means that that is enough of a chunk to help Maokai go for the Q and Smite combo uh, to go and get them for themselves. That is nicely done. That would have been a complete wash. JDG really should not have even been there. Like we said, LNG has run of the entire map. Absolutely love the draft that they put together for themselves. They've got the Zaya Rakan combination. They've got the best jungler in the meta. They got Renekton into Cassante playing it correctly as well and Silas to get these counter picks. And because of how well Jarvan did, they didn't even have to give up any amount of pressure, Silas versus Jace. Look at the wallet diff here. Zika just standing in the middle of the fight, able to take them down. It is two for two to start though, but there's no way you're gonna take the rest of these guys down. Zaya Rakan, congrats, you can get those guys. Level 12 and level eight, actually Rakan, Rakan dutifully roaming away enough to make sure that the AD carry has his level 12. Uh, so there is a little bit of a trough here. There we go. We do see Rageblade coming out from Kaisa. Just don't like it as much with Stormraiser. Spoken about it in the past, like you can just go for an early collector into Pickaxe. And then your Rageblade, you can have the Empowered Q. Plus you have the, you have the Lethality, plus you have the Shred coming from Rageblade. Beautiful start to that. Good, nice little lockdown to get everyone bopped up to start that, but then the cleanup just comes. The cleanup crew goes, and there's no continuing right here. But power to them for getting the two weakest members. All right, getting that kill. We see Silas on 202 and Zai on 214 CS. 20 minutes into the game. Those guys have not missed a beat. They're going to be very, very big. Now, Q is evolved for Kaisa. The problem with these builds and all of these different builds that don't 
or, or that go for a Q early spike, the Q starts becoming fake right about this stage in the game, right? Whether If you can find your isolation damage, great. If you can find it in lane, great. And that's the strength of the Serrated Dark Umbral Glaive into a completed item. I prefer to see it, like we said, Umbral Glaive into Serrated Dark, then you can go Rage Blade, then you finish your Collector. That kind of checks all of your boxes, and then you can go on hit with Nashra's Tooth. By doing it this way, the W, which becomes her most important ability for this stage in the game, doesn't do anything. All right, we're talking about a zero amplification on that and also not being able to get the additional cooldowns. It does have, what, some of the AD scaling? I can actually pull this up. All right, the W does have 130% AD, but that's all of your AD. It doesn't need to be your bonus AD. It also has 45% AP, so it scales better on those AP items anyways, and the AP are better cost to effectiveness for them. So you really want to get that spike if you can, because at this stage in the game, it largely becomes how many Qs can you throw out? Also, when you're talking about the synergy with the rest of the kit, it becomes noteworthy that, hey, your team is trying to get Demonic Embrace plus Jace Poke Where's the Kaisa poke to go along with the comp? Uh, I absolutely don't mind Rage Blade. Like, you don't need to be Luden's Echo to be part of this composition. You can absolutely still be Rage Blade because it has all that shred attached to it. But it's, uh, you know, how are you actually contributing right now? It's not enough damage. They're going to have to wait for the Nasher's Tooth to get the rest of the upgrades. Now, it does very neatly give you the upgrades. Uh, when you go this build, you are gonna have access. Nasher's Tooth always giving you enough AP. Now you'll have enough attack speed between these three items, et cetera, et cetera. Storm Razor kind of fills the blank of how bad Static Shiv was, but that doesn't change the fact that Storm Razor's not that good either, right? I don't think that we've seen, have we seen Storm Razor Kaisa win yet? I don't think we have. That's across all levels, across all differences. If it doesn't work in the hands of JDG, then we might have problems. We might we might be able to just like check it off and say this one's dead. Uh, I never would have recommended it, but it is it is a thing. People are trying to do it. I'll give credit to them. I'm sure they have analysts saying that, hey, this is good because it functions in this sort of way. But when you come into the real practical usage of not having the early serrated dark for the Kaisa damage for Q when you need it in lane phase, when you do have 1v1s and 2v2s. Now you don't have your empowered W coming for this fact effect. You also don't have the 100 AP to get just extra damage on it on top of the extra cooldowns. It'll be interesting to see whether or not we see any more Storm Razors if they do come back. If they come back and win, heck, we might see, all, we might see nothing but Storm Razor Kaisas. Uh, unfortunately, people tend to be very results oriented, but we're going to stick to our guns here. Umbral Glaive into Serrated Dirk, finish Rage Blade, then finish Collector. That's your build. You can take that one to the bank. You can even finish Collector depending on, on where your item spikes are coming from. It builds very nicely. Pickaxe goes into both, so you can sort of justify both sides if you have your pickaxe and you end up backing again with 2100 then you can go back pick up the rage blade if you don't you can pick up collector and then get the rage blade third and you'll be fine but anyways going into this game silas 3-0 going to be a huge problem anytime that you see a first stri strike silas and they're going after their q you're going to see a everfrost to go along with it that is to put them lock them into place allow you to hit both halves of the q they use the Q and they cancel the animation with the Everfrost. But battle lines being drawn for this soul. JDG saying we're going to die on this hill. And I'm going to make a bold prediction that die you shall. Even the Jace poke, like this Maokai poke, meaningless right now. Kaisa poke, meaningless. You're, you're working on just a Yumu's on Jace and you're playing into this super stacked Renekton and Silas. I don't expect them to have success, but if they're going to do it, it's going to be on the back of early chip damage plus the all-in from Kaisa. Good synergy from Rel. Scout looking for a really nice flank position. They're giving up a little bit of space. They're actually going for a coin flip here, and they give up the dragon. Okay, 
Don't mind giving up the dragon as long as you win the fight. That's what you're absolutely here to do. Scout opting to go full damage into 369, knowing that he, or preying on the armor stacking build. They finally do get the damage up front. Zaya's getting the resets. Lethal Tempo is just carrying this fight. You're not going to be able to kill Cassante without uh, significant return damage. There they go. They finally get the Kaisa and four. No, that's just a clean ace. Five for zero. Uh, congratulations, guys. You got a dragon. Was it worth it? LNG says, let me work it. We'll put this dragon down, flip it, and reverse it for Baron. <sighs> Interesting position. They're going for the smite. You see this targeting the, the J4 sort of Mordekaiser style, taking the jungler out of the fight, push him to the wall, and then all out him to get him. But that does mean that you're isolated. Scout's able to get that front damage. Kind of wish that Scout spent more time uh, targeting Cassante, right? Cassante's on Iceborne Gauntlet and Thornmail. You deal basically true damage to him, and especially once he's all out, you can essentially kill him in one combo. Uh, Q into Everfrost, or, or E into Q Everfrost, and then Q2 and W. Either way, you're going to get those kills. Uh, next, he's going to get Gargoyle Stoneplate, and that's going to be significantly harder. We don't want to let him get to that stage. But that being said, Maokai's going to have a very difficult time uh, finding a role for the rest of the game. Jace, Kaisa as well. Kaisa going to be for that on hit. Maokai's going to be starting to peel. You can use Maokai Ultimate to hold people in place and try to land Empowered Shock Blasts from Jace. Zonia's had to be a mistake right there. Oh, he's Zonia's to cancel the... The Silas ultimate. Never mind. That is totally worth. That is absolutely something you want to do. Put that ability on cooldown. Unfortunately for them, Silas ult is going to come up faster. Uh, then he's going to be able to finish any kind of continuation item on that. Uh, but it is a neat little thing that you can do. Anytime you can spell shield or any of those effects, you absolutely want to do it. Especially if you're going to finish that Zonia's. But uh, Maokai's going to have a very difficult time trying to get the rest of that item. Now, Zika uh, coming in with the wave, this makes a lot of sense. He's very safe to do so against 369. Again, Silas might have been a little bit better uh, matching up into it, but they like the idea of flanking with Zika on Renekton more than they like it with him there. It looks like Silas is able to pick the next Maokai ultimate up and, you know, cute cute trick, a little parlor trick to make him dodge uh, the... The ult was able to pick up the second half. I, at least I see. I don't know if on the spectator he was able to get the first one, but I know that that's what he's trying to do. They get the rest of this. Is Renekton... Renekton's back in. All right. So they find their way back in. They're able to get the kill here onto 369. That's going to be GG. They're going to push the rest of the way up. They're going to keep the cannon alive. Now, something you can try to do, champions with poles, with hooks whatever it is, get that cannon under your turret. When it's buffed by the Baron, it is staying out of range and it just stays there and it chops down your turrets. You need to be able to knock it back into your base so Maokai can do it, uh, Kasante can do it, plenty of champions can do have access to that knockup. Would like to see them try to do that to make their turret stay a little bit healthier going into it, but that's gonna be it for game two. We're gonna see game three for the promotion uh, I expect JDG to take blue side on this next draft.